In today's video, we will be turning some acetosalicylic acid I extracted last video into salicylic acid with an acid ester hydrolysis. The procedure in this video was written by UC235 on Reddit, and I'll post a link in the description. It is by far the best method I have found, plus requires less reagents than some of the other procedures I have found online. So thank you very much. The main purpose of an acid hydrolysis is to break down a compound with water catalyzed by free-floating H plus ions which will be our acid. So let's get started. The only materials that I will need for this video are the acetosalicylic acid I extracted last video and hydrochloric acid at 31.45%. I bought my hydrochloric acid from Amazon though you could easily get it locally at a pool store or a hardware store. We will start by weighing 22.3 grams of our ASA into a small beaker. We next prepare a round bottom flask by adding a stir bar, followed by adding the 22.3 grams of the ASA. I also wash the beaker and funnel with a little bit of distilled water. Next, we add 300 milliliters of distilled water to the round bottom flask. Followed by 5 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. It is important, even with small quantities, to always add acid to water and not the other way around. Splashing acids is extremely dangerous. This method can also be scaled up and I actually scaled it down for the purposes of this video. After this, I add a cold water condenser on top, turn on stirring, and attach a plastic clip between my condenser and my flask for safety. Then I turn on my hot plate to a medium heat. We are going to reflux the solution for about 30 minutes. However, I will not start my 30 minute timer until I see the first signs of phase change in my condenser. The benefits of refluxing are being able to keep a mixture boiling without losing any of the solvent. During this reflux, a few things will be happening to change the ASA into salicylic acid and acetic acid. This acid ester hydrolysis will be breaking this ester bond. That oxygen forms a bond with free-floating hydrogen ions in the solution to create an OH on the salicylic acid molecule. Next, we have our carbonyl group that will form a bond with the OH from the water and create our acetic acid. To get everything to boil nicely, I add some aluminum foil to insulate my round bottom flask. This will speed everything up just a little bit more. Once I see phase change in my condenser, I start the 30 minute clock. After 30 minutes, I remove the foil and we can see our water boiling pretty nicely. Also, that almost all of the ASA is gone, and all of the salicylic acid is now saturated into the water. I then turn off heating and stirring and let the solution cool down. Once everything is cooled down to about 180 degrees, it stops refluxing, and I can remove my condenser with safety. I then take out my stir bar. I notice some small insoluble chunks of what I believe is pill filler from the aspirin tablets, Though, when I take out the stir bar, all of the goop filler is stuck to it. Taking out my stir bar also acted to agitate the solution, and within about 120 seconds, crystals started to form, and within about 5 minutes, the entire flask was filled with salicylic acid crystals. I wasn't prepared for how fast the crystals formed, so I missed filming of the very start of the crystallization. Right when I noticed it, I turned on my camera. This video is sped up, however the entire flask crystallized very quickly. From here, I start to break up the crystals with a glass stir rod. They are incredibly soft and fluffy crystals. Next, I vacuum filter off the crystals, followed by washing them three times with 250 milliliters of distilled water. This is to remove any leftover hydrochloric acid or acetic acid that still remains on the crystals. I also washed the flask two times to remove most of the crystals. I left the crystals under vacuum for something like 10 minutes before moving them to a dish to air dry for 24 hours. 
My final yield was pretty close to what I was expecting with 15 grams of pretty pure salicylic acid. In the method written by UC235, they said the expected yield was about 95%. In the future, I plan to make methyl salicylate, which is commonly known as wintergreen. However, UC-235 also notes in this procedure how to decompose salicylic acid down to phenol, which is a precursor in all sorts of other compounds. Also, I will eventually cover the base hydrolysis of ASA, then compare my overall experiences and yield. As always, thank you to my Patreon subscribers for helping support my videos and you can see their names here. You can also see all of the videos I plan to put out in the future. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.